All right, welcome everybody and thank you for joining us here at Citrus College, our virtual open house. Uh, open house is something that we have been doing for some years now and uh, this is our first time doing a virtual open house and so uh, we thank you for joining us and thank you for watching. What we wanna do is tell you a little something about the Automotive Technology and Medium and Heavy Truck Technology Technician Development Center and some of the programs that we offer, including our medium and heavy truck technology, our automotive technology, which includes the Technician Education Cooperative, the Toyota and Lexus T10 program, and our High Performance Institute. And we have a couple of other surprises in here for you as well. So thank you for joining us and let's get started. So automotive technology is an industry that uh, spans a great many uh, technological fields, but it's primarily focused on those uh, machines and pieces of equipment that can uh, exhibit self-propelled motion, right? And so that incorporates uh, airplanes, uh, aerospace technology, and of course, cars and light trucks, and then of course, medium and heavy duty trucks. And so our focus at Citrus College is on automobiles and light trucks, and then medium and heavy duty trucks. And so that's primarily what we're going to be talking about. In addition, to our stationary power generation program and uh, some uh, coming programs that we have that are exciting as well. So automotive technology, uh, automotive service technicians, mechanics uh, must continually adapt to changing technology uh, and diagnostic and repair strategies and techniques. And so <clears throat> because of the nature of automotive technology and the, the uh, continual improvement of that technology, technicians don't get to just learn this one time and remember that for the rest of their careers. It takes a, a good deal of lifelong learning to succeed in this industry. But in order to get into the industry, the best preparation is formal automotive technician training. Our opportunities are excellent for those who complete uh, programs at Citrus College. And so that's what we really wanna to talk to you about. And so if you have been thinking about a career in automotive technology, the question becomes for you, what are you going to do about it? And so we're here to help you, uh, or at least, uh, you know, inform your answer to that question. So we have a number of pathways that you can choose, and we're going to talk in detail about one of those pathways, and we're going to talk just a little bit about the other pathways that we have. So the pathways that we have are our Automotive Master Technician Certificate Program, which if you choose to go the route of Toyota and Lexus Technician, you can do that. We also have something we call our High Performance Institute, and that's for those of us that really like cars and trucks and wanna make our cars go faster and stop faster and corner faster and do everything cool like that. We also have a medium and heavy duty truck program a stationary power generation program. And for those folks who are working and not able to attend college full time, we have an automotive maintenance and light repair program, which can get you essential skills that are utilized in approximately 80% of the repair work that our industry partners actually sell. And so that's a good thing for us. And then coming soon in the uh, fairly near future, is a clean energy and vehicle electrification program and we'll touch on that towards the end of this presentation. So right here, <clears throat> Technicians Education Cooperative, what are the career opportunities as an auto mechanic, right? As an automotive technician? Well, you can be a, a technician in an auto shop and you can be one very quickly if you were to attend a program like ours. Uh, this is excellent preparation if you wanna own your own shop someday. And so that is uh, something that you can think about. And then of course, automotive repair, automotive service is something that is utilized and, and needed by government agencies, mass merchandisers who have fleets of vehicles, utility companies, you name it. And so the, uh, the possibilities are endless, just becoming a repair technician. So what we wanna do is talk about our core automotive courses. And at our core, in our master technician certificate are a number of courses that span approximately a two-year period. It's actually slightly less than that, but it's approximately a two-year period and leads to this thing that we call an automotive service diagnosis and repair master technician certificate. 
And so that starts with uh, something that we call stackable certificates, right? We're working on this automotive service diagnosis and repair master technician certificate. Um, but there are pieces of this that you could choose to do, or you could do the whole shoot and match. And so if you do pieces of it, there is the underhood technician certificate, which essentially talks about everything that you can do when you're fixing a car that is on the ground. There's the undercar drivetrain specialist uh, certificate, which speaks to those types of auto repair that necessitate the car being up over your head. And when you combine those two things and add in a class on work experience where you will study under uh, one of our master instructors, uh, then you have this thing we call the master technician certificate. Add one more five unit class to that and you have our Toyota T10 technician certificate and that prepares you for life in a dealership uh, for Toyota or Lexus uh, as a repair technician. And so there's lots and lots of opportunities here. And if you're wondering why under hood technician and under car technician 34 plus 35 equals 57, well, that's because they have a couple of classes in common. And so those units cross over. But we're going to take a look at the specific classes so that you can understand that better. So right here, if you were to get started with us, <clears throat> the typical start point and, uh, that we uh, talk about is a summer start, so right after folks finish high school, you can jump into an Auto 101 Introduction to Automotive Service Diagnosis and Repair. That's a six-unit class that meets four days a week for six weeks and is taught by my colleague, Mr. Lip. And Mr. Lip is going to speak to that just briefly. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Like Mr. Brown said, my name is Mr. Lip, and I'm very excited to be your very first instructor for the auto program. I was a technician for over 30 years and I have a lot to share with you. My job is to introduce you to the field of automotive repair and our program. Auto 101 is designed to teach you all of the basics that you need to continue in the courses. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you very much, Mr. Lip. And so our Auto 101 course uh, offers foundational skills that lead you into the rest of the program and prepare you for what comes next. And you'll see what comes next is two classes that are taught by our colleague, Mrs. Englert. One is Electrical and Electronic Systems One, and the second is Engine Service and Repair. And so on the Electrical and Electronic Systems One side, that is, uh, first of all, something that prepares you for what must obviously be coming next, which is Electrical and Electronic Systems Two. And then the Engine Service and Repair is all of the mechanical aspects of an engine, and we will let Mrs. Englert speak to both of these classes briefly. Hi, yes, thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, first of all, let me uh, um, thank you all for joining us and we're thoroughly impressed with your dedication to yourself and looking forward to um, seeing you guys in person, really. So I do teach 156 and 151, 156, including electrical and electronics systems. Um, it will mainly focus on electrical principles, fundamentals, testing Ohm's law, and it would also give the students the opportunities to observe theories associated with a 12 volt system, um, also including starting and charging systems. Uh, Auto 151 dives into engine diagnosis and repair, uh, including the internal combustion engine, of course, and the four stroke cycle, ignition system types, functions, testing, operation, components, and design. It's an opportunity to take a part in engine and actually uh, inspect, measure, precisely measure, and reinstall all components. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mrs. Engler. So that would be what your first uh, session, your six week summer session and your first full 16 week semester look like. And that will bring us to our second, uh, or, or rather your second intercession or six week session and that is Electrical and Electronic Systems 2, and uh, you guys are lucky you get to have that with me. Um, electrical and Electronic Systems 2 builds on where electronic, Electrical and Electronic Systems 1 left off and uh, picks up with electronic controlled systems, meaning those systems that are controlled by computer. And those are exciting things for us in automotive technology, especially since so many things have automatic functions and so many parts of a modern automobile are computer controlled. But where the most exciting development has been in the last 15 to 20 years has been where those systems 
communicate with one another. And so you have individual computer controlled systems and you have those computers networked and therefore communicating with each other and talking to each other. And so the focus of our electrical electronic systems too is to discuss how those systems communicate, what protocols they use, and what are our diagnostic strategies for how to deal with those kinds of systems. And uh, so when that is done, that has prepared you with a lot of skills that are necessary for classes that come after that. The first one in the spring is a 16 week course, Auto 154 Chassis Service and Repair. Now chassis service and repair is interesting because it combines kind of the last purely mechanical work uh, that exists on a modern automobile, but also combines it with some electronically controlled systems. And so we don't usually think of the suspension system as being electronic. We don't usually think of steering as being electronic. We don't think of brakes as being electronic. However, electronics and electrical systems have intervened. They have made their presence known and we have electronically modulated suspension systems We've moved into electronically controlled power steering systems that are no longer hydraulic. And of course, <clears throat> in the era of vehicle stability control, our braking systems utilize something called electronic brake force distribution, where hydraulic pressure is generated by the driver's foot in much the same way as it might ever have been, but it gets distributed to the individual wheels on an as needed basis as determined by computer. And so we've given our computers a lot of authority that at one time they didn't have. And so this course covers that. And it's, uh, it's a fascinating uh, uh, piece where we see the interaction of mechanical components, electrical components, and the computers that oversee those. And then during that same spring semester, you will also have Auto 167 HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. And that's taught by my colleague, Mr. Rubio, who's gonna say a few words about that. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, welcome, everyone, and thank you for your interest in our program and your interest in becoming a future automotive uh, medium heavy truck or power generation uh, technicians. So uh, my name is Mr. Rubio. I teach the HVAC course, and HVAC stands for Heating, Ventilation, and Air Conditioning. Uh, it's one of the systems on the vehicles that a lot of people don't think about until it breaks. And so in this course, you learn how to diagnose, uh, service and repair air conditioning systems and heating systems, as well as the ventilation systems on the vehicles. Uh, this course actually goes through and starts uh, with the uh, theoretical and scientific concepts uh, that have to do with air conditioning. And it leads you all the way through to the point where you, you'll be able to take apart a dash assembly and actually take apart the entire uh, HVAC system, including removing and replacing the compressor, the condenser, the evaporator. You'll be using uh, air conditioning machines to service the air conditioning system. Uh, and so you'll also be learning about the different types of refrigerants that we have on vehicles. Uh, and just like how my colleague, Mr. Brown said, uh, you actually will be using the skills you learned in previous classes, especially in electrical class, because HVAC is uh, a system that utilizes a lot of electronic controls. And so uh, this will just be uh, another way you can apply the skills you've learned previously, and then it expands it into the area of air conditioning. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rubio. <clears throat> Moving on from this spring semester, we'll be going into another intercession. And in that intercession, uh, perfectly placed uh, from a timing perspective, is our manual drivetrain class. And in manual drivetrain, what we're talking about are those transmissions, uh, four-wheel drive transfer cases, and third members, or rear axles in most cases, uh, that uh, you know, make up the manual drivetrain assembly. And it's a, beautiful, it's a beautifully timed piece because to remove a transmission from a vehicle, especially a modern vehicle that's front-wheel drive, what you end up with is a whole bunch of suspension disassembly at the same time. So that you've had your chassis class before you have this class is perfect. So Mr. Clark, who teaches this class is gonna speak just a few words to uh, tell us about this. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, greetings, uh, my name is Mr. Clark and I am the drivetrain instructor. And so the two classes that um, I will teach will be manual trans and then automatic transmissions. So 
the first class, um, we're going to get in and tearing cars apart pretty quick. And so it's nice that you have already made it through electrical one, electrical two, chassis, HVAC, because we are going to um, tear into these things. And pretty much by the fourth day in class, you will have the engine suspended in the air with the transmission coming out the bottom and the entire front cradle and suspension on the floor. And uh, we'll be servicing clutches. We go through and we will rebuild uh, both rear wheel drive and front wheel drive transmissions. We will do uh, drive shafts, drive axles, uh, set ring and pinions, and then diagnose and repair um, four wheel drive systems. So with the electronic intervention, uh, computer controlled four wheel drive systems, we'll be uh, working on diagnosing transfer cases. And that's going to keep us really busy in uh, six weeks. All right, very good. And that takes us from summer into fall. And so this will be our participants' second fall semester, a 16-week program, and it starts with Auto 168, and we see engines once again. And the reason we're seeing engines again is because the first engine class was engine mechanical, and it was all of the pieces that make up the internal components of an engine. This class is all about the control systems and the various sensors and actuators that allow a modern engine to do the magic that it does. And my colleague, Mr. Lip, is gonna to speak to what that looks like. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Yeah, I get to see you again. Um, I saw you at the beginning of the program and you're towards the end of your program now and you've made it through a lot of stuff. Um, and in engine performance and diagnostics, you're gonna learn about how the onboard computer system monitors and regulates the operation of the engine and technologies such as variable valve timing, direct fuel injection, emission control systems. So now that you've been swinging a hammer and taking engines and transmissions out, we're gonna take a look at how all that makes the engines work. And uh, we're gonna get real technical about it, get scan tools out and take out fuel injectors. And we're just gonna have a, a good time working on the cars and spend most of the day in the lab. Thank you, Mr. Brown. And thank you, Mr. Lip. Uh, moving on, during the same semester, that 16-week fall term, will also be another experience with Mr. Clark. This time, instead of manual transmissions and drivetrain, it'll be automatic transmissions. And Mr. Clark's just going to speak a few words about that. So automatic transmission is probably one of my favorite courses, and that is because the students in this part of the program are at the end of the program. And we have gotten to know all of them very well and they have gotten to know their classmates because they've been coming through as a cohort. And so it is just kind of a nice end. It's a very technical uh, part of the vehicle. It is what we call, a lot of people will call the magic box because it is a magic box underneath the uh, vehicle that is going to decide when to shift gears and how to shift gears. And it's going to do it all on its own. Uh, but you still have to be able to diagnose it and repair it. So we're going to go through an entire transmission we will actually run them on a transmission dyno before we begin we will have you tear the entire automatic apart you will then measure rebuild clutch packs put it all back together and we will verify the operation at the end with the dyno again and then we're going to do a lot of on-car testing and there's a reason why automatic transmission is linked with engine controls and that's because a lot of the sensors and inputs that are being used in engine management is also the same inputs that are being used to control the operation of the automatic transmission. So it is a lot of fun uh, for me to teach this class, and uh, it prepares you for the A2 exam. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Clark. <clears throat> Moving on from this point, you would have completed all of the core courses in our Automotive Technology Master Technician Certificate Program. As an addition to that, we have uh, our Auto 230 Cooperative Education. It's, a, it's four units of study where you are primarily working at a job site. And in addition to doing that, you have nine hours of lecture over the course of a 16-week semester in most cases, uh, coordinated by our colleague, Mr. Clark, once again. And so Mr. Clark's going to tell us a little bit about what that cooperative education looks like. So cooperative education is an opportunity for us to have linked you with a job site and hopefully work with a mentor. And so you're going to take what you've learned at Citrus and then apply it to the job site uh, in conjunction with a mentor to kind of over, oversee what's going on. 
And while we're going to teach you lots of great information and tons of technical material, um, life is going to teach you a whole lot more. And so this is an opportunity for us to use all the a live shop environment, what it's like to hustle, and how to get all these jobs done, and all the ins and outs of working at either a dealership or an independent, and be able to um, add that to your knowledge base so that you come out a very well-rounded and um, proficient technician. So this is something that uh, you can take at any point during the, your study here at Citrus. It does not have to be at the end. There will be some students that right after chassis class, because they've got enough information to make them employable, they can actually do brakes and suspension and alignment stuff, and they'll start working about halfway through the program, and others will wait until the end. So this is a, a class that can be taken at any point during the program as long as you're working at a job site with a mentor. All right, thank you, Mr. Clark. Carrying forward from here, we see for those folks uh, who have uh, completed or who are nearly complete with their Master Technician Certificate program, we also offer a Toyota and Lexus uh, program which prepares you for life in a Toyota or Lexus dealership as a technician. And there's extraordinary opportunities and we have a long track record of placing students in Toyota and Lexus dealerships and having them not only be successful as Toyota and Lexus technicians, but moving into dealership positions such as shop foreman or service management. And then we also have many, many stories we can tell you of students who've moved on to Toyota Corporation itself and become a field technical specialist, a product engineer, uh, a technical trainer for Toyota or even a district service and parts manager. And so there's lots and lots of opportunities within the Toyota and Lexus family and we're proud to have them as one of our key sponsors. Now looking at what that entails for you as the potential student, uh, there's one additional course that is five units, 72 hours lecture, 54 hours lab, and uh, this capstone course is taught by one of our adjunct faculty members who is a practicing Toyota Master Diagnostic Technician. And uh, this course is intended to teach the many aspects of working in a dealership that don't fit neatly into our other uh, curricular offerings. And so how it is that you properly document and bill warranty repair orders, that is something that's included in this course. How it is that you properly deal with noise, vibration, and harshness complaints that come down to interior rattles and other things like that. Those don't fit neatly into other curricular offerings. And so they show up in this class and it prepares you for the kinds of uh, service and repair that you're going to do on cutting edge products from Toyota and Lexus. Now, having discussed our master technician certificate program Toyota and Lexus, and even our cooperative education, we got to tell you that we have other things available. We are not just Toyota and Lexus, and we are not just cars and light truck. We are also a high performance institute, which speaks primarily to engine development, and so we'll take a look at that. Uh, we have a medium and heavy truck program and a stationary power generation program, and my colleague, Mr. Rubio, will be speaking to that very soon. And then we also have a program in maintenance and light repair which is intended primarily towards adult learners uh, who don't have full-time availability to attend college during the daytime and or folks who are already working in the industry but want to enhance their skill. So we're gonna speak to all these uh, programs as well. In our High Performance Institute program, and you see a little race car there, which belongs to my former colleague and mentor, Mr. Dennis Korn, um, he was a, uh, uh, just a go fast enthusiast and especially an engine enthusiast. And uh, he left a big mark on our program and our High Performance Institute exists largely because of his influence. But these are advanced classes in engine design, engine blueprinting and engine performance tuning. And when we say blueprinting, we're talking about the measurement and the machining of engines in such a way that you can rebuild them uh, to better than what they were when you started. Uh, this offers career opportunities as a high performance engine tuner, an engine, an engine machinist or builder, and in the research and development of new engine technologies. We offer a host of classes. You see the list on your screen here. There's engine tuning, there is engine design, and the engine design class is a very heavily uh, theoretical class 
which speaks to how it is the different parts of an engine interrelate and how they can be made to work better than perhaps uh, they may have in the beginning. Cylinder head and cylinder block development and then engine dynamometer operation and testing procedures. We're real proud of our High Performance Institute. We have a state-of-the-art chassis dynamometer and a uh, two dyno cells uh, which can take standalone engines that have been removed from a car, built, uh, and prepare them for tuning. And so we have a lot of really fun stuff in the High Performance Institute. With that, that brings us to our medium and heavy truck technology program. And I'm going to turn over the presentation for a short while to my colleague, uh, Mr. Rubio. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, I'm very excited to uh, present the medium and heavy duty truck program at Citrus College. Um, it is its own separate program, so it's not actually part of uh, directly a part of the automotive program. However, we uh, do join forces as far as the faculty are concerned, and uh, we do model this program after the automotive program. So a lot of what you heard as far as the courses and the sequence of the courses on the automotive side, you'll see that it's actually very similar on the heavy truck side. Uh, of course, we're, we're going to be dealing with much bigger vehicles, uh, everything from class four to class eight trucks, which means you'll be de dealing with primarily commercial type vehicles. Uh, and uh, you'll be dealing with different manufacturers as well. So uh, we do everything from Volvo to Peterbilt to Kenworth, uh, Isuzu. And when we deal with uh, heavy trucks, we also deal with a lot of different engine manufacturers. So a good example is like what you see on the screen right now uh, with Cummins, and that is uh, one of the latest engines, the X15. And so this is actually a 15 liter engine. So this is a much bigger engine than what you would see on a smaller vehicle. Uh, but we also deal with Caterpillar. Uh, we also deal with Detroit diesel. And so uh, this is a great opportunity we're one of only 17 colleges in the state that has a medium and heavy duty truck program. And so this prepares you to work at places uh, like any trucking company like Rush Trucks, uh, like KKW. Uh, this can also prepare you to go into uh, other companies uh, like Volvo, uh, Caterpillar. And so there's a lot of need and a lot of demand. And so, um, and the pay is very good when it comes into this industry, when you go into this industry. And uh, it's a lot of the same skill set, but you're gonna notice that it, when you're dealing with heavier trucks, uh, you know, it's a little bit more labor intensive. Uh, and you still had to have those same diagnostic skills that you would have to diagnose a smaller vehicle. Uh, and we also, uh, we see a lot of trucks utilized in government agencies, uh, the technology used on diesel trucks is a lot of times used on light rail and transit agencies, which includes bus uh, companies as well. <clears throat> so if we can go over to the next slide, we'll go ahead and talk about uh, what the actual program structure looks like for the medium and heavy duty truck program. So you're gonna see that there are gonna be uh, two uh, certificates that you can obtain if you go through our heavy truck program. The first one is this, the uh, Diesel Engine Service Diagnosis and Repair Technician Certificate. And this is really the core uh, certificate for the program. And this is where you primarily learn systems that would deal with the engine and just the overall uh, systems of the truck. So you start off with really it's, uh, we call it the preventative maintenance uh, course. That's your very first course, and that's typically taught by my colleague, uh, Mr. Bryce Neighbors. And you get introduced to uh, the trucks, you get introduced to uh, the legal side of the trucks when it comes to inspections, what trucks are required to, to do when it comes to hauling things, uh, what maintenance items have to be looked at, uh, and you learn how to do basic uh, things on a truck like uh, knowing how to check tires, remove the tires, check the brakes, doing minor services like oil changes on heavy trucks, doing uh, fuel filter services on heavy trucks, uh, checking the lighting system, and any of the other safety systems on the truck. From there, uh, you uh, will take the uh, diesel engine course. And this diesel engine course is uh, where you take apart a large diesel engine and put it back together. 
Now, there are two engines that we usually focus our attention on. And uh, one of them is a Caterpillar uh, 3406B. It's an older mechanical Caterpillar type engine, which is a great start when you're first learning about diesel engines. Now, the main part of the diesel engine uh, looks and acts uh, very similar to the uh, light duty gasoline engines, but it's the fuel systems that typically you'll notice is a lot different. So these uh, first engines are a great way to get introduced to diesel uh, fuel systems. And then we transition over to a Cummins ISB 6.7 liter uh, engine, which is uh, a newer style engine that uses common rail. And so that would be more typical of a, what you would see uh, on a modern truck. So from there you go and you start taking your first electrical class and much like the automotive side of the program or the light duty side of the program, uh, electrical one does deal with your basic electrical systems uh, like the battery system or the battery, uh, starting system, charging system. Uh, you also learn about uh, Ohm's law, Watt's law, learn how to measure voltage and amperage and resistance and learn how to do basic diagnostics on electrical circuits uh, throughout the vehicle. Then that leads you into the second electrical course, which is more of the electronic side of the systems. And so this is now where, just like in the uh, light duty side, you learn about the electronic controls of a lot of these circuits. So you deal more with uh, computerized systems. And every day we're getting more and more of these systems on the trucks. Uh, and so this is a pretty crucial course uh, for the remainder of the courses. And then after that, you go into the actual diesel engine management course, which now you get into how to diagnose uh, the various types of diesel systems, including common rail, which is uh, the type you would probably see the, the most of today, but even the uh, Huey systems and uh, unit injection systems. And so uh, you get introduced to the various types of diesel uh, engine management fuel systems. And then of course, all the sensors and controls uh, including the computer controls that come with that, as well as the diagnostics. Uh, we do uh, go through and use Caterpillar's uh, specific diagnostic tool for the engines, as well as the Cummins specific diagnostic tool for the engines. And we also use the uh, Snap-on Perlink IQ. Uh, so you get, you get to use, and I say you get to play with various types of diagnostic equipment, and it makes you a much better uh, rounded technician to be able to work uh, in a multitude of different truck companies. So once you complete that group of courses, then you earn this certificate, the uh, Diesel Engine Service Diagnosis and Repair Technician Certificate. And if we can go ahead and click over to the next slide, that actually will open you up to be able to take the courses necessary to now uh, get your medium and heavy diesel truck master technician certificate. This does require that you, you complete the first uh, set of courses to, and earn your diesel engine service technician certificate. But then from that point, uh, you can take four more courses uh, that pretty much deal with the other systems you're gonna see on a truck. So this includes the hydraulics course, uh, which deals with the hydraulic systems that you might see on some of these trucks with boom cranes, uh, with lift gates, uh, and in fact, we even get into some of the machine equipment uh, that Caterpillar uses uh, and their hydraulics. And so after that, you would take your drivetrain course where we get into uh, some of the manual Eaton Fuller transmissions. So we talk about the 10 speed, uh, 13 speed and 18 speed transmissions, the manual transmissions. We talk about clutches. Uh, and you are required to remove a clutch and rebuild a transmission in that class. Uh, and it's uh, a pretty heavy duty stuff, but you learn the techniques, the proper techniques of how to remove the transmission, uh, how to hoist things properly. And then we also go into the automatic transmission side, which includes Allison transmissions. And we, uh, we deal with uh, medium duty Allison transmissions and heavy duty Allison transmissions. And you do take one apart and put one together. Once you're done with that course, you go into the truck chassis course, uh, which includes going into uh, the brake system and the air brake system specifically. So you learn all about the air compressor, uh, 
the uh, airlines and all the valving that comes with that. And then the foundation brakes, which include the drums, the brake shoes, and all the wheel end stuff. And then we also get into, in that same class, the suspension system. So we deal with uh, the axles. Uh, we do deal with the kingpins and that sort of stuff. Uh, and then once that course is done, then you will be also taking the HVAC course for the heavy trucks. And very similar to the light duty side, we deal with uh, removal of components like the evaporator, the condenser, the compressor, uh, and also the underdash components on the truck. Uh, we do also talk a little bit about the trailer HVAC systems as well. So one interesting thing, and Mr. Brown, go ahead and, and click that over if you would. So what's really cool about this is there's a lot of need and one of the local companies, Quinn Caterpillar, has actually been very supportive of our program. As a matter of fact, has donated a whole bunch of equipment, a whole bunch of tools. Uh, and so uh, we actually, uh, with them, jointly started a power generation program. Uh, and it's the first of its kind in the state. Now, what's nice about this is it actually stems from the diesel engine. And so uh, the types of diesel engines that you learn about on the heavy truck side is a very, it's gonna be the very same type of diesel engine you would use on a power generation side. So let's go ahead and click over to the next slide. So a lot of people don't even realize what, that we have generators in a lot of different places that are crucial to our survival. And so no one ever thinks about, you know, what if the lights go out? What if the utility company can't provide us any power? We've seen this before in major disasters. Uh, we had the uh, horrendous fire that occurred in Northern California and it knocked out the power up there. Uh, you know, we have these terrible uh, hurricanes uh, and tornadoes, they knock out power. And so people don't even realize that um, hospitals, schools, data centers, uh, government agencies, uh, a lot of times they need to have their lights on even if they can't get power from the utility company. And so how do, they, how do they do that? They do it using a diesel engine that runs just a huge generator. And so uh, ours is the first of its kind in the state. We're the only community college with a stationary power generation program. So uh, this does require you to go through the first part of the diesel program to learn about the diesel engine. But as soon as you finish that, uh, that allows you to take the courses necessary uh, to learn about the uh, diesel generators. So this is an example of what an on-site uh, diesel powered generator looks like. And you have a couple of examples on the screen. Uh, if you look at the uh, upper right side, that's actually from a hospital. Uh, this is actually from a hospital elsewhere in the, uh, in the nation, but it's very typical of hospitals all around us where they have these large diesel engines that run generators in their basements. And so who goes out and fixes these things? Uh, it's the same kind of technician that learns about diesel engines in general. Uh, but a lot of times they need to have a little bit more training when it comes to those big generators on the backside. So what's cool about this program is you learn about the uh, three phase electrical alternating current systems. It's the same kind of uh, electricity as your house at home, your, your, your schools and that sort of stuff. <clears throat> so in the program, you actually learn uh, about how that power gets transmitted and generated. So it's pretty cool. Uh, and then also, if you look at the uh, lower left side, you'll see a couple of gentlemen working out on a generator that's on site. So this is uh, outside of uh, something like a factory and so you'll typically, as a gen, uh, power generation technician, you'll go out and uh, be serving, servicing these things. Uh, and, it's, and it's actually a pretty cool gig because you, you get to go out and drive to these places, meet a whole bunch of different people and work on their equipment. So uh, like I said, government agencies, heavy rail makes big use of uh, power generators like this. Even marine application, you know, these large ships, they have power generators. Uh, and then, of course, I mentioned hospital emergency power. A lot of hospitals utilize these things. So what is the core sequence if you were to go into this area? So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. So if you can go ahead and click on the next one, Mr. Brown. So uh, now 
the program is actually centered around uh, the Electrical Generating Systems Association's uh, uh, training. And so though it isn't directly their training, it's our training, we do prepare you to get certified to become an EGSA technician, which means you learn about the diesel engine, the prime mover, but you also learn about the high voltage side, including the safety aspects. You learn how to test the high voltage uh, coming out of generators and, and how to repair the generator if it's not putting out the proper voltage. Uh, and so, uh, like I mentioned before, to get into this side of the program, you have to start by completing the diesel engine service technician certificate. Once you complete those courses, that allows you to take the courses now for power generation. Now, hydraulics is still a portion of this side of the program because uh, a lot of times you'll notice that there'll be uh, hydraulic pumps and things like that driven off of diesel engines uh, for certain applications. So hydraulics sometimes uh, comes into play even though you're dealing with uh, uh, generators. Um, but then you get into the main portion of the uh, power generation program. So you see you start off with power generation one, which is really your introduction to these large generators and how altering current works, uh, especially when dealing with uh, things that operate off of this stuff like electric motors and capacitors and that sort of stuff. Then you get into power generation two, where it gets into more of the testing side of the, uh, of the systems. So you learn what a, what a good voltage or amperage or wattage looks like. Uh, you know, if you got some, some weird issues going on with the power coming out of the generator, you know, you could test the generator and is it the generator or is it whatever the generator is powering up? And then the, the last class is the power generation controls. This is actually where we talk about what controls the generator and uh, generators are controlled directly by panels on them, but they're also controlled by systems off the generator. Systems that are actually tied into the utility company's power coming into the uh, buildings. And so this is where we talk about that side of it, where it's like, okay, if we have a generator and it's tied into some of this, some of these switches that have to turn on and off, how do these switches know when to turn on and off? So we talk about that sort of stuff. And so again, this is just, this is really a way to prepare you so that if you go into the industry and uh, want to get your certification, you're well prepared to do so. Thank you. Oh, and my apologies, there's actually one more slide here. So how does the overall course sequence look like for MTRK? Well, here's just a really brief high level overview. You could see uh, on the uh, first circle in the upper left, uh, we have the diesel engine service and repair technician certificate. You can see it starts at the preventative maintenance MTRK 148 class, but then it goes into the engine class and the electrical class, and then it continues on finishing off the electrical two and the diesel engine management class, and that gets you your first certificate. From there, uh, you can go into the power generation side. Um, and so you could see the uh, power gen one, power gen two courses. You could see the advanced controls course down at the bottom left and then the hydraulics course. And if you finish that, of course, you'll get your power gen service uh, and repair technician certificate. Uh, if you didn't really want to go on the power gen side and you want to stick to the heavy trucks and maybe start working for one of the heavy truck companies, then of course, we'd want you to go through the master technician certificate side of it. And so really you can start that side of that program after you complete your first electrical course, because that's what's required for your hydraulics class, uh, as well as your chassis class. So you can actually get stuff going uh, with some of the classes when, it, when and if they're available uh, to start on your master tech certificate. And so once you complete your hydraulics class, the chassis, drivetrain, and HVAC class, uh, then uh, you can get your certificate. Now there is a requirement, you are required to have work experience, just like on the automotive side, on the light duty automotive side, you are required to have at least two units of work experience class, which means we are going to uh, or we, we expect our students to be out in the field working. Uh, and of course, uh, we get calls from uh, service managers and uh, shop owners that are always looking for good students. So we're always looking for good students that we can uh, help get a job. Um, and so we want you to complete this program with some work experience before you get your master uh, technician certificate. And so that's the final requirement in this program.
Thank you, Mr. Rubio. I find myself wondering whether uh, the engine in the basement is more impressive or the big radiator that cools it is more impressive. But so, uh, Mr. Brown, I'm gonna interrupt you there. It is way much cooler to hear these things just roar in the basement. Uh, you are literally standing next to uh, a dragster. I mean, that is right. how loud these things can sometimes get. And, and it is awesome to feel these things rumble. Tell us a little something about uh, that Caterpillar engine that you showed us that was mounted in the basement. What was the displacement on that thing? Uh, I believe that was a uh, 24 liter engine, or maybe been a little bit bigger than that. May have been a 28 liter. Um, that was a picture taken by a, a former student, in fact, uh, who sent that to me and uh, showing me kind of the stuff that he was looking at. I didn't get a chance to look at the uh, engine number, the uh, placard on the engine, but you can see it's it has way more cylinders. Massive. Yeah, it's just massive. You stand, you stand next to this thing, and I mean, this thing is about eye level. Uh, to to someone, it's it's a massive thing, and it's awesome because it's it's the same stuff we deal with on small cars. Uh, on the light duty side, you're burning fuel, you're moving pistons, you're turning a crank, but you're saving lives doing it, which is an awesome thing. All right, thank you for that. Uh, so right here, uh, one of the things that we've recognized, and some of you as prospective students may not want to hear this, but we have recognized that math skills are very, very important to people who work in our industry, whether it's automobiles and light trucks, or whether it's medium and heavy duty trucks, or quite frankly, any technical field where you are working with technology, you need to have math skills. That having been said, you don't necessarily have to have had advanced calculus in order to uh, successfully rebuild engines. And so we have worked with our math department to help develop uh, a math course and we're offering it as a learning community where you can be in a math class that is populated primarily by students from our disciplines, meaning automobile and light truck and medium and heavy duty truck students. So these are applied mathematical concepts specific to automotive technology and similar technical trades. This is a CSU transferable course. And so this is college level work. It's taught by our colleague in the math department, Paul Swatzel, and it was co-developed by Mariana Rubio, who you just heard from on the medium and heavy truck side. And so I want to invite Paul to just say a few words about the content of this class. Hi, uh, thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, I'm Paul Swatzel. I'm the uh, math instructor for this class. Uh, this is a relatively new class, but um, it seems to have gotten a good start. And um, I'm not just a math instructor, I'm also an automotive enthusiast. So I um, know a little bit about this stuff, not near as much as um, your automotive instructors do, but um, I'm pretty up on the, you know, what the new cars are and uh, some of the technical aspects of things. And like I said, I, I'm an auto guy myself and I like to probably break the speed limit once in a while and do things that I probably shouldn't do. Um, anyway, uh, that being said, this is a, a, a math course that is basically geared towards primarily automotive tech students. Um, we start out with uh, a lot of just basic, basic math that a lot of people have forgotten over the years. And then we apply it to um, automotive applications. We cover things like basic arithmetic, uh, decimals, fractions, place value, measurement. Uh, place value is important because when, a lot of times when you're measuring things on an engine, you're measuring things very precisely. So we look at um, maybe anything anywhere to the from the you know tenth to maybe the ten thousandth of an inch. So we measure things with vernier calipers. Um, we measure things with micrometers. Uh, we also look at uh, various applications that could come up, you know, in automotive uh, courses like Ohm's Law. Um, and we look at resistors and the colors on resistors and how, you know, how, what the color coding means. So it's kind of a mishmash of things. We also look at a lot of geometry, a lot of uh, vo volumes and areas and how do you convert from the US system of measurement to the metric system 
and you might have an automobile that's got both U.S. Um, parts or U.S. Uh, bolts or nuts on it and metric nuts. And so we'll look at the different wrenches and, you know, how do we know that nine sixteenths is larger than a half? Those kind of kind of things that a lot of things that a lot of times we don't really think about until you actually have to deal with them. So it's, it's a good class and I look forward to seeing some of you in the class. Thank you. Thank you for that, Paul. It's an exciting thing for us to be able to partner with the math department and develop and deliver a math class that is custom tailored to the needs of students in our particular field. And so we thank you for your uh, participation in that process. <clears throat> um, one of the programs that we offer that doesn't get as much attention as uh, some of the others is this maintenance and light repair program. And it's, it's an interesting program because it is primarily geared towards working professionals and those folks uh, who are already in our industry who may need to brush up on their skills, uh, enhance their skills, look towards promotions and higher wages and uh, especially towards those folks that because of family obligations, work obligations and other life realities don't have full-time go to school in the day availability to attend school. And so this maintenance and light repair program, uh, we analyze very carefully uh, along with industry partners, what it is that they sell the most to their customers. So they sell labor and repair and we analyzed their repair orders and looked at them very carefully and found that we could offer a program that prepares students for 80% of the work that happens in a typical automotive repair facility. Where this program uh, differs from our daytime program, this, first of all, this program is offered almost entirely in the evenings. And this program does not contain a lot on the diagnostic side of automobile repair. And so you're not learning how to diagnose complex problems. What you are learning how to do is the bread and butter procedures that are performed in typical automotive repair facilities. And so this is uh, uh, intended to be a program to prepare you for uh, work in, in the automotive repair field and uh, prepare you for most of what gets done in a typical repair shop. This program utilizes something uh, similar to our uh, daytime program. We have stackable certificates, which means you earn a skill award after a few classes. You, you earn another skill award uh, after another few classes. And if you complete all those classes, you get a certificate of achievement, which is recognized by the state of California for 23 units in automobile uh, maintenance and light repair. And so it's a good program. It has a lot of potential. And for those of you that are watching this presentation and uh, don't have full-time uh, daytime availability to attend college, this might be the program for you. One of the things that we have that is uh, <clears throat> uh, a future program for us, but that we're already dabbling in and have been for some time, is this Clean Energy and Vehicle Electrification Certificate Program. And now this is gonna cover three key areas and that's alternatives to gasoline. And so you see some alternatives listed, compressed natural gas, uh, which largely means natural gas or methane, uh, LPG, liqui liquefied petroleum gas, which primarily means propane, and then renewables such as ethanol and biodiesel. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have electric and hybrid vehicle technology and hybrid vehicles is something that we've been teaching for a long time at Citrus College because our friends at Toyota have been the leaders in hybrid vehicle technology. And so hybrid vehicle technology is not that far removed from electric vehicle technology, except that hybrid vehicles are just a little bit more complex because they incorporate an elaborate control system that can determine whether we need to use the electric system, the gasoline engine, or some combination of the two. And then uh, the probably the most cutting edge piece of this is the hydrogen fuel cell technology wherein we can generate electricity using hydrogen and have the only emission from that process be water. And that's a, a, a very promising newer technology uh, because batteries uh, tend to be limited in terms of how much energy they can deliver before they need to be recharged and the recharge process tends to be time consuming. 
With hydrogen fuel cells, you have a device that can take hydrogen, uh, produce electricity with water as the only uh, emission. And when it's time to you know, recharge, rather than recharge a battery, you refill a tank of hydrogen. Um, there are challenges associated with that. And uh, those are components of the class. We're looking at launching this in the fall of 2021. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. And we're excited about it. One of the things to acknowledge is the importance of ASE certification to automotive technicians. Now, ASE, Automotive Service Excellence, is nationally recognized uh, as a certification body for technicians to demonstrate competence in various areas of automotive repair. Uh, on the automobile and light truck side, there are eight key areas that we focus on, and you will be taking tests in each of these areas that are administered in an off-site location um, after completion of each of the courses that is associated with one of those uh, educational areas. One of the things you can expect as a student in our automobile and light truck and our medium and heavy truck program is that you are going to uh, report to school as if you were reporting to a job. And that means you'll be dressed in an appropriate uniform with proper safety attire, and uh, we will maintain standards associated with appropriate dress and uh, safety readiness at all times. One of the things that's kind of fun that we do is uh, whenever you complete a course, you get an insignia that is able to be attached to your uniform uh, that represents each course you've completed. And so we have an Auto 101 uh, patch that you can get, and it shows our TDC Technician Development Center logo. And then as you complete each additional course after that, you get a little insignia that goes below that. And one of the things that's kind of fun for us is that we can tell uh, a student that is a complete green pea and just showed up, and we can tell the difference between them and the students that have been around a little bit longer and have completed more stuff. And not only can we tell the difference, but the students can too. And that means if you're gonna ask a question, you can tell who might be able to answer it because they have the insignia that shows they've already been through what you're going through. And sometimes it's easier to ask one of your fellow students a question than it is to ask an instructor. And so this helps to facilitate uh, an environment of continued learning. Now, I'm not sure to what extent our viewers may have thought about the investment they're going to have to make in tools and equipment but I can tell you that the investment is a heavy one. And in the first five years of your career, you're probably not taking it seriously if you haven't yet spent about $30,000 on the iron in your toolbox. And that having been said, it is a benefit to you to have a program that can help you get a head start on doing that. And so coming to a program like ours, we have partnerships with Mac tools, with Matco tools, and with Snap-on, where students can get, depending on the product they're purchasing, up to a 52% discount on the retail price of these tools. And this is really significant because that means you can purchase these tools cheaper than the people who actually sell the tools. And that having been said, we have uh, an extraordinarily positive relationship with these tool vendors and they like to come in, they like to put on demonstrations and shows and uh, provide our students with a source of tools at a steep, steep discount. <clears throat> one of the other things that's fun and one of the things I appreciate very much since I've been an instructor at Citrus College for a little over 20 years now is that as instructors in the automotive area, each of us gets to teach uh, in the particular pieces of automotive technology that we enjoy the most. And so I teach chassis service diagnosis and repair, which includes brakes, suspension, steering, and I also teach electrical and electronic systems. And so I get to run the gamut between high-tech diagnosis and swinging a hammer at things to fix stuff. And that's really fun. Um, the other colleagues that I have in the department, they each teach in their area of expertise. Uh, and so we, we really uh, enjoy that. And it, it means something to take a class with an instructor who enjoys what they're doing. We use cutting edge technology. And at some point in the future, when you have a chance to visit our facility, I think you'll agree that we are 
uh, fully equipped uh, with the very latest and greatest bells and whistles that you'll find in our industry. And uh, one of the things that's really exciting for us is as a state institution, you can attend Citrus College for $46 a unit. And what that means is you're gonna be saving money big time compared to going to a comparable uh, private trade school. Now I get corrected on this figure that I put on the screen here that says a two year program at Citrus College could save you $35,000. But I would invite you to investigate what it costs to go to a private trade school and learn this craft because you'll find that it is phenomenally more expensive than a community college. And especially when we talk about the need to spend $30,000 on tools in the first three or five years of your career, uh, saving $35,000 on your tuition is probably a big deal. So it's something for you to consider. Uh, another thing that you can consider is that units in automotive technology, most of them are transferable to the California State University system. And as a result, if you decide you want to further your education, you can pursue uh, a bachelor's degree and have the training in our program count towards that. Um, and our lab activities utilize competency-based instruction, which means what we're primarily interested in is being able to verify that you've learned how to do stuff. And if you know you've learned how to do stuff, that means you know that when you go to a facility for a potential job that you can tell them there are a number of things that I know how to do. And if there are things you know how to do, uh, you're gonna be worth money to those facilities. The next thing for us to talk about is admissions and kind of what comes next. If you like what you saw here, uh, we'd invite you when uh, we're able to host you to visit our campus and visit our program. Uh, but meanwhile, we want to talk about the admissions process and what that looks like. So right here, first and foremost, how much does this program cost? Um, so there are a number of costs associated with going to school. The nice thing about the costs at a community college is that you only have to pay for these things a little bit at a time. But what I've tried to do here is to break these out for you in such a way that you would know what the total cost is. And so uh, the enrollment fee, if you're doing our master technician certificate program, you're going to be into us for about 57 and a half units of instruction. Uh, the college, uh, or I should say the community colleges in the state of California charge $46 a unit. And so that would uh, run you $2,645. Now that enrollment fee, bear in mind, you only pay for it uh, as you take classes. So if you take a three unit class, then you pay three times 46. If you take a five unit class, then you, take, you pay five times 46. Uh, so you don't have to write a check to anybody for $2,600 at any one time. You just pay for it as you go. Uh, there's a parking fee. If you're coming to campus during the regular semesters, it's $54. During our intersessions, meaning winter and summer, it's $27. And so that adds up a little bit. There's a health service fee every uh, term that you attend classes. There's a student service fee every time you attend classes. We have an estimated cost for uniforms and glasses, and we have an estimated cost for books. Uh, the interesting thing on the books is that uh, with our recent uh, change of publishers, they're offering a digital subscription to the textbooks that we use in our program. And so you have a choice of purchasing each book in hard copy and it running you around $800 or purchasing a digital subscription, uh, which would last you two years and cost you about $200. And so all said and done, over the course of about two years, little by little, you will spend a little bit less than $4,000. And one of the things that's exciting to remember, this is California, financial aid is available and these tuition and expenses uh, are spread out over two years. And so you're not writing a check for this much money all at any one time. So that leads us to uh, this slide that I call, what do I do next? And uh, there's a number of key contacts on here. Uh, first, if you're excited and you want to get started right away, then I invite you to go to citruscollege.edu and find the online application process. Um, it's there, uh, it's, it's easy to do, and you can be uh, approved for admission very quickly. If you have questions about our Toyota program, I invite you to reach out to my colleague, Jeremy Clark, who you heard from earlier. 
Uh, his email address is listed on this slide. If you are from one of our articulated high school partners, meaning Bonita High School, Chafee, or Mark Keppel, I'll invite you to reach out to our colleague, Terry Adams. And Terry, how about you just say hello to the group real quick? Hello. Our friend Terry works behind the scenes to really make all of the important things happen that make our program as special as it is. And she is your key contact if you come from Bonita, Chafee, or Mark Keppel. And uh, we're really excited to have her not only here with us tonight, but with us every day. And if you have general questions, uh, one of the cool things we have is an email address, automotive at citruscollege.edu. And uh, everybody you've heard, uh, heard from today uh, will get the message if you send it to that email address. And so if you have general questions about our program, whether it's automobile and light truck or medium and heavy truck or stationary power gen, you can send a question to that email address and uh, you will hear from the right person in response. And so now having done, having gone through this presentation and uh, told you all of what we have to tell you, I'm gonna invite my colleague, uh, Mr. Clark, uh, to share with you the uh, application and enrollment process for our Toyota program. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. So the, uh, the light, light duty automotive side of the program that meets during the day, which would include Include both the uh, master technician certificate and the T10 certificate um, is a highly sought after and popular program and so much so that uh, we pretty much for the last 10 years have had more demand than we've had space so one of the things that we have done is we work to to build a cohort group and so we reserve a certain number of seats for this program so that we can um, fill it with students that are um, highly employable, passionate, and ready to, to go to work. And so we have an application process to be part of the cohort. And so this document that you're seeing here is what we're sending out. And so there are four things that we're going to want you to put together for us in a portfolio. And those four things are we want you to put a resume together. That resume doesn't have to be very fancy. Uh, for some of you that are coming straight out of high school, you may not have had a, an opportunity to work um, formally outside of the house. So you may have done uh, volunteer work. You may have done uh, yard work for neighbors and things like that, and that's fine. Those are all the kind of things that we'd like you to, to list on your resume and want you to put you know, your contact information on there and whatever you can to build yourself a resume. The fun thing is, is that as you go through the program, you'll be able to add more and more to your resume as you learn different skills and as you earn certificates along the way from Snap-on and from uh, some of our other partners that we have, uh, you'll be able to add all that information to your resume so that when you get through the program, you'll be able to look back and see how far you've come. So we're going to have you put a resume together. We also would like you to get two letters of recommendation. So we want someone to be able to say that you're a good candidate for this program, that you're going to finish what you start. Because once the seat is given to you, we can't give it to anyone else. Once we've offered the class, that cohort group has left the train station and there's no adding someone on later. So we want to make sure that we fill the program with a solid group that is committed and is going to finish what they start. So two letters of recommendation. It should not necessarily be from a relative. We know that your mom loves you and she's going to say great things about you. But if you can find a teacher or a counselor or a colleague or somebody else who can write a letter uh, for you, that is what we're looking for. So two letters of recommendation. We also would like you to, to uh, print out your unofficial copy of your driving record. So you're going to need to have a driver's license to be able to start this program because you are going to be driving vehicles as part of the program. The other reason why we care about the DMV record is because there are certain aspects of the industry. For, for example, dealerships cannot hire uh, anyone who has more than two points on their driving record. So if I have to pick or if we have to pick between students that have reckless driving and a speeding ticket and a bunch of other stuff and someone who has a perfectly clean record, the person with the perfectly clean record is going to be the one that's going to be employable the quickest. And so we want to be able to um, look at that. We want you to be able to look at that as well so that you can see if there is anything on your record, either by mistake or 
just things that you had forgot about. So we would like an unofficial copy of your driving record. That costs about $2. You can do the entire thing on the DMV website. You can print it out at home. It doesn't need to be official. Just an unofficial copy is great. And so that will go in your portfolio. And then the last thing is if you've got um, your grades from high school or from college, it doesn't need to be official just so that we have the opportunity to have a discussion. I want to be able to look at and, and ask you questions about classes you took in high school. The interview that we're going to have is really I want to try to get to know you a little bit. And so I, I want to figure out um, what classes you took. Did you enjoy the, the class because it had a lot of hands-on elements to it? I mean, so I'm not looking to, to judge for any reason. I mean, it's just an opportunity for me to have a, a very a more casual conversation with you. And so these are things that we're all going to put together. And if, if there are questions about classes that you may have taken at the high school, um, then we can pass that information over to Justina, the counselor, and she's able to answer questions and, and give us a lot more guidance. So these are four things that we're put together in a portfolio. In this case, um, we're going to have you email that portfolio to either myself, so it's jclark at citruscollege.edu, or Terry Adams, T. Adams at citruscollege.edu. And if you can return those as soon as possible, um, then we can start calling you up and have a, a Zoom meeting for our interview, at least during this point, and place you in either the summer or, uh, or the fall cohort group. And so that is what we're looking for in this process, and that just has to do with, with the high demand that we have for the program, and we want to make sure that we fill it with the best candidates possible uh, that are going to uh, make us proud and and be ready to go to work. And then we'll pass this over to Justina. She can tell you a little bit more about the application process because um, there is a little bit of a process uh, so that you can go ahead and, and get yourself um, applied to the college. Hi, thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, my name is Justina Rivadeneira. I'm the counselor that works directly with uh, the automotive students. So you would be meeting with me or um, there is another counselor that works with me, his name's Anthony, who uh, can also answer some questions. So um, I know that in one of the slides you'll see our information on where you can contact us. Um, but I just wanted to thank you, take a moment to thank you for listening to this recording. And I am sure that you are comparing prices out there and quality of programs um, at various schools and training places that you can get this type of training. Um, I just have to say that our instructors are very dynamic and they're passionate about the work that they do. Aside from that, we have many grants and scholarship opportunities and support programs to help make this program affordable for you. I'm eager to share some of those resources with you and help you get started on the right foot. I'm confident that you won't find another program that's this high caliber and it's and it, at such a low cost. Um, so with that said, um, I am, you're definitely looking at a top-notch program here that's worth your time, energy, and money. So as counselors, we're here to help you persist in your studies. We can answer questions about your major um, certificates, skill awards that we offer. We can create an academic plan so you know what classes you're going to take every semester. We can assist you with re the registration process, offer you career information, discuss academic difficulties that you may come across, and provide you with personal counseling to address um, any issue that may impact your academic success. Um, with that, I won't leave you my number because I know that it's listed here on the website. Um, but we did want to address also how do you get started? Like how, if you were a student that said, I love this program, I want to get started right away, I would have you go on to the Citrus College website and um, on the uh, top um, right hand side, there's a little uh, magnifying glass. Um, I know that we could give you a link, but since this is a recording, we can't show you the link here, but I, I'm going to tell you how you can find it when you get onto the website. So you look for the little magnifying glass on the upper right hand side of the page when you get to www citruscollege.edu and I want you to write down on a piece of paper as you're listening to this recording three phrases that I think you're going to need to help uh, make this much easier for you okay so first one is apply for admissions 
that's what you're going to enter when you click on that little magnifying glass you're going to uh, enter apply for admissions and the only thing that i can tell you because the instructions are all there on the website is that you need to have uh, an email address before you start creating your account so make sure that you do have an email address um, uh, handy one that you've used or that you can get information from maybe it's somebody else's email but make sure you have access to it um, because that will be required for you to submit or um, fill out the application. And then um, also, um, you're going to have to create an account when you first get in there. So um, I urge you, if you have any issues going through the application, don't hesitate to give me a call. I can help you over the phone. The other phrase is important dates. I always tell students to plug that in because sometimes, you know, if you can't find the exact day when classes start or registration or stuff like that, um, I go on to citruscollege.edu, again, in that little magnifying glass, I type in important dates. The thing that comes up, that the second um, item that comes up is called deadline dates. You click on that, and it'll give you all the information about registration for that term, okay? Um, last one is online counseling. And that's where you can make an appointment with the counselors on campus or you can uh, call us um, and make an appointment through a secretary in our office. Uh, we're sorry that we can't be available to you in person, but hopefully that uh, will come to an end soon and we will get to meet you personally. So I look forward to that. And again, my name is Justina Rivadeneira and um, I welcome you to the program. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Justina. Uh, your support means a lot. And as Justina mentioned, we have another counselor that works directly with us, that's Anthony Giamalva. And uh, both their contact information uh, are listed here. And email is a good resource for getting a hold of them. And so if I might, I'll just go back to the previous slide where you can see some key people to contact. Uh, our website, citruscollege.edu, uh, contains a link where you can apply uh, and begin the pro process. If you have Toyota questions, you can reach out to my colleague, Jeremy Clark. If you have uh, general questions, you can reach out to automotive at citruscollege.edu and a whole bunch of us will hear from you and the correct person will be able to respond. If you happen to be with one of our uh, articulated high schools, you can reach out to our colleague, Terry Adams. And also if you're sending in materials for the T10 application process, you can send those to both Jeremy Clark and or uh, Terry Adams to move that process forward. And our counselor partners, once again, Justina Rivadenera and Anthony Giamalva, they work right in tandem with us. And uh, just as a, as a closing remark, I want to thank everybody for their participation in this presentation. And to you out there that are watching this, thank you for considering Citrus College. And uh, we hope to be your go-to establishment for getting involved in the automotive industry.